the six greatest freaks in nature currently in the NBA today. Now, I have to start off by mentioning that in the current NBA, guys like Kevin Durant, LeBron James, and Giannis are three of the biggest freaks of nature, but I already included them in my all-time version of this video that I did a while back, so I didn't include them here because I didn't want to repeat all the same stuff. But if you do want to hear about them and I haven't seen that video already, after this is over, click the first link in the description to watch that video. But with that said, here's six of the other current freaks of nature in the league today, whether it's due to their athleticism, size or a combination of the two. Starting with Zion Williamson, who's clearly one of the players most known for being a freak athlete today. And you can tell that just by looking at him and watching any of his highlights. But let's really break down what goes into him being a true freak of nature. And start with the fact that he really is a one of a kind athlete, that no other past or present player lives up to his combined size, strength, speed, and athleticism. And here's how he stacks up to some current and former NBA players, who he's drawn comparisons to in terms of sheer size, play style, and potential. Sean Kemp, Blake Griffin, LeBron James, and Larry Johnson are all just as athletic with similar body types to Zion, but none weigh as much as he does and are able to do exactly what he can. And as you can see, Charles Barkley matches up in stature almost exactly to Williamson, but even he said that was because he was fat, which is something Zion isn't. So it's clear that Williamson is a freak of nature, and there's no one exactly like him. And the way that he got to the size he is is just insane. The man has said that as a freshman in high school, he was a skinny 6'3 kid that weighed 175 pounds. And over the next two years, he proceeded to grow 5 inches and gain 100 pounds. Now in any normal human body, that'd be a scary sight to see. But for Zion, it was really a superhuman experience. Because the more his body grew, he was able to jump higher, run faster, and got stronger altogether. And it was all natural, it wasn't like he started hitting the gym 6 times a day. He didn't even realize he was 250 until he stepped on a scale as a junior. And was shocked because he said he didn't feel heavy at all, and felt like a better athlete than ever. And with where he's at today, that'd be impressive enough for a player like him. But then you add in this 40 inch vertical, and his ability to dunk from the free throw line, and all of this combined is really what puts him as probably the NBA's biggest freak of nature right now. The only concern with Zion Williamson going forward is how well his body can hold up. And honestly, only time's gonna have that answer. Then number two goes to Taco Fall, who's been the most quietly talked about player over the past few months. And everyone wants to see the 7-7 giant succeed in the league. Whether or not he'll do that is up to him, but he's nowhere short of the physical tools that are going to give him a chance. And Taco's definitely not a freak athlete or anything like that. I mean, he only has a 26 inch vertical, but we had to include him because, I mean, look at him. He's a freak of nature in every other sense of the phrase. You might have heard some of these numbers about him before, but if you haven't, here's how Taco stacks up to the two previous NBA Combine record holders for wingspan and standing reach. And keep in mind, Mobamba and Rudy Gobert's numbers were both thought of as mind blowing when they came out. What's mind-blowing about Taco though is that with his 10 foot 2 standing reach, he can basically dunk the ball without jumping. Then you combine his unimpressive 26 inch vertical with his height, and it gave him an NBA combine record 12 foot 5 inch max reach. And that's not even to mention the fact that he weighs over 300 pounds. And surprisingly with all this, Taco's a lot more mobile than other guys we've seen at his size. I mean you look at Sean Bradley and George Mirosan, and I get tired out just watching them try to run. I mean, it looks like they're running through sand on a beach with stilts. But Taco's not like that, with a lot of GMs believing he has great coordination and balance for his size. Number 3 goes to Kristaps Porzingis, who may very well be the most impressive on this list. Because if you think Kristaps Porzingis only made it for the fact that he's 7'3", you're in for a big surprise. And I get that through the way he plays, him being injured, him having only played for the Knicks, and the fact of him being named after a mythical creature, you probably didn't realize just how much of a freak of nature Kristaps is. And here's why. First off, we'll say that Porzingis isn't like any of the other 25 players over 7'3 in NBA history. He doesn't play down on the block just protecting the rim and scoring in the post. He plays more from the outside in, and that's due to the fact that he played point guard for most of his childhood. And as he got older and taller, he just stuck to the position until he was 6'8 at 15 years old, which is when he slowly started working his way through all five positions. But no matter what position he played, even when he tried power forward, 
Jordan Center. Growing up in Latvia, the only NBA basketball he was able to watch were old Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant tapes that his parents had. The thing is, he eventually grew to 7 foot 3. But him growing up and using that play style is what's kept him so mobile and led to him being able to move better than most guys his size in NBA history. I mean, look at 7 3 Boban and the differences these two guys have. But it gets better than that because through hard work and dedication, I was able to dig up an old episode of Sports Science that tells us how much of a freak of nature Kristaps really is. It started off with a drill of dribbling in and out between three poles that he completed in 2.37 seconds, which sounds quick, but to put it in comparison, 5'9 Isaiah Thomas and D'Angelo Russell both did the drill in recorded times of 2.33 seconds and 2.29. Putting both point guards as just a fraction of a second quicker in the drill. But it gets better. Because the highest point that Kristaps can touch with a running start is 12 foot 2 and a half inches. Over 2 feet higher than the rim and just 3 inches away from the highest point a prime Orlando Dwight Howard could touch during the same test when given multiple tries. And we're talking about a young Porzingis who could still get more athletic as time goes on. And that's not even the most impressive part. Because the most impressive is that his max vertical is 37.5 inches. 2 inches higher than both Dwight Howard's and Blake Griffin's were when they first came into the league. So we're talking about a 7 foot 3 giant who's nearly as quick as Isaiah Thomas, can touch nearly as high as a prime Dwight Howard, and has a better vertical than Blake Griffin. And the only reason you might not have noticed that Kristaps was this athletic is probably because he's still learning how to use his height to his advantage. And it was something that he came out and said in his rookie season. That really makes sense because if he grew up playing guard so much, he's still young and wouldn't have much time to fully understand how to use it. Number 4 is Russell Westbrook. And Russ is a weird one, because there's no doubt that he's a freak of nature in every sense of it, but if you were looking at him just on paper, you probably would have never guessed. I mean he was 5'8 entering high school, and didn't grow to 6'3 until right before his senior season. And then even coming into the league, none of his combine numbers were impressive, including his 36 inch vertical as a guard. But anyone who's ever seen him take the floor in college or the NBA knows that it's been clear that he's one of, if not the most pound for pound athletic player in NBA history. The only players even comparable to his explosiveness and his acceleration on the floor would have been prime Derrick Rose or prime LeBron James. But Russ combines that with being arguably the fastest player in the NBA. And that right there would be impressive enough. But then you think about how he can go from either going full speed to stopping on a dime and pulling up for a jump shot or finishing at the rim with more intensity than anyone we've ever seen. There's no statistics or metrics that can really measure just how athletic Westbrook is overall, but it's clear by watching any of his games that he can't be matched. Even NBA GMs agree, with them voting him as the most athletic player in the league for the past four consecutive seasons. There's no doubt that he's one of the NBA's top athletes and freaks of nature. Number 5, Bull Bull. Bull Bull, son of former NBA player and 7'7", Manu Bull, was destined to be tall. And he's been a freak of nature ever since he was born. 6'5 in 7th grade, 6'10 by 14, and 7'2 by the time he was a senior in high school. Everyone knew he'd be tall, but no one knew he'd be as unique of an athlete as he turned out to be. Right now as a player, I'd say that his closest comparison is Kristaps Porzingis, but during the combine, he had nearly the same measurements as Rudy Gobert. And a person the size of Gobert shouldn't be able to do the things that Bull can do. He shouldn't be able to dribble as well as he can, he shouldn't have been able to shoot 52% from 3 the way he did in his 9 games for Oregon, and shouldn't be as quick on his feet as he is for a guy that's 7-2. And when you combine all of these things together into one player, it's what's made Bull Bull one of the most polarizing players in the world since his senior season in high school, and what's making him into one of the most diverse players currently in the NBA. Now with the height he was given from his father, he was also given the challenge of having such a skinny frame, and this combined with his reported work ethic is what caused him to drop so low in the second round of the draft. But I mean if he can work hard enough on the floor, as well as in the gym to build muscle, Bull as a dude would be pretty scary if he started getting in the gym. But his potential as a basketball player could be even scarier. And finally, number 6 goes to Mo Bamba. And the first thing that always comes to mind when I think of Mo Bamba, besides the song, is his potential. He's got all the tools to be great, and that's why he was drafted 6 overall. Not necessarily because of how good he is now, but because of his potential with a big thanks to his overall size and athleticism. And we already spoke about the fact that he has the largest wingspan and standing reach out of any recorded NBA player outside of Taco Fall, which is impressive enough. But then you add in the fact that a player of his size in the NBA combine ran a faster 3-4 court sprint than Russell 
Westbrook, John Wall, Dwayne Wade, and Kemba Walker. And that makes him sound not human. We talked earlier about just how quick Russell Westbrook is, and for a 235 pound, 7 foot tall Mobamba to be able to get down the court faster than he can is insane. The man still has to put on muscle, but besides that he's a smart player that can shoot the three and clearly has a combination of athletic abilities like we've never seen before. So there really is all the opportunity in the world for him to become great. And the same goes for all these guys. Like I said at the beginning, LeBron, Giannis, and KD were already talked about in the unofficial part one, so go check that out if you haven't already, and comment and let me know your guys thoughts on who in this video is the most freakish athlete of them all. Drop a like if you enjoyed, subscribe, and I'll catch you next time.